Hey, hi, welcome back to our Cisco SD-WAN course. In this video, we'll discuss about the lab topology that we are going to use throughout this course, how I have built this lab in my server, and then what is the version that we will be using in our lab demos. Just in case, if you still haven't downloaded our lab topology diagram, it is available in description box of this video as well. Please do download and keep a separate hard copy or a soft copy as you wish. But I feel if you have a hard copy, specifically a color printout, it will be great. Okay, let's start our discussion. Just a moment. The playlist for this complete Cisco SD-1 course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. To encourage me, please do like, share and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell icon so my effort will reach you on time. In our lab topology, we will be using 20.6.x code for our vManage, vBond, vSmart and vHCloud. To be exact, it's going to be 20.6.2 and 17.61a for our CAT AKV. The vManage, vBond, vSmart and Manage routers sizing in terms of uh, vCPU, RAM or hard disk, I may not be following the Cisco recommended guidelines considering this is only a lab. If in case you are bringing this up in your lab, I suggest you to go ahead with the specs which I am going to use now. If it is your production, you should definitely follow the Cisco recommended guidelines. In our topology, the vBond, vSmart and vManage will be brought up in the ESXi, whereas every other components in our lab topology will be brought up inside a JNS3. What I'm going to do now is, I'm going to give you a high level of where I have installed this JNS3 uh, and where I'm going to install the vManage, vBond and vSmart, how they will be able to speak between them. It is optional for you whether or not you understand the part where I'm establishing connectivity from GNS3 to the outside world, how I'm doing that. It's not mandatory for you to understand as I told you, but it will be good if you can understand that, right? Focus highly on the logical topology, that does matter more. Let me get my pin here. First thing, I do have my hardware server and I do run ESXi in this. I have GNS3 VM already installed inside this ESXi and we will bring up our controllers. Say just for example, I'm going to write uh, vSmart and vBond only. Okay. Inside this GNS3, we will bring up our routers or uh, other components, right? SD-WAN routers or any other switches for that sake, right? We do have options in GNS3 where uh, we can extend GNS3 to the external world. So that's what we are going to do. Followed by that, vSmart will have some legs, right? I'm going to put all these in the same VLAN in ESXi. That means they will be able to speak between them. So this is what is going to happen in that backend. But as I told you, please don't worry about this. Okay, let's start exploring the lab topology. I'm going to walk you through multiple diagrams. All these are part of the diagram which I have shared to you in the PDF. So let's start. The first thing is transports. We do have a MTLS and an internet transport. Followed by that, we have a cloud data center. So in this cloud data center, remember, I'm talking logical. I'm not talking anything physical here. So this is the logical design which we are going to work. Okay. Now, in the cloud data center, we are going to host our vManage, vBond and vSmart. Their gateway will be the cloud router which is available, cloud gateway router. It's going to be a 7200 in our design. Then the cloud gateway also have connectivity to both INET and MPLS. There is a leg available from that. Let me just delete this. Then we do have the data center. This is the customer data center. This is a cloud data center where we are just hosting the controllers. Think like uh, maybe we don't have enough compute to host those controllers. Just we bought some space in the cloud and we are hosting it there. In the customer data center, we are going to bring up two SD-WAN routers for redundancy purposes. Both of those SD-WAN router is going to have a leg on both MPLS and internet. Then we do have connectivity to the LAN. If you see, there is multiple connectivities. The first connectivity is for uh, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, which will be our VPN 10 and VPN 20. VPN 10 will be our data VPN and VPN 20 will be our voice VPN. So this physical link you see here, I'm going to do a sub interface there and one will serve VPN 10 and another one will serve VPN 20. This physical link, the second one is for the firewall. So this physical link port and the firewall port and also this physical link port from this uh, second router are going to be on the same VLAN so that uh, the next stop from this router is this firewall 
why I have done this is to show you service chain. And uh, just a side note, I do have Nexus OS uh, switch in the data center. Don't worry, it's not that complicated of a CLI. Then we do have a, another internet link in the data center, which is connected to the core switch. That internet we are going to use for the internet exit. So whereas this internet is uh, used only for the transport primarily, right? Whereas this internet is the data center internet, which we are going to use for reaching out to the internet applications. Followed by this, we do have three branches, sales office, warehouse and corporate office. Specific to sales office, we have one router. Please note it's a VH cloud. Whereas all other boxes are going to be CAT 8KV, this is the only one which is going to be VH cloud. Now we do have directly connected uh, user machine and a voice phone. Voice phone will be in VPN 20, user machine will be in VPN 10. And note in this side, we do have a modem provided by the internet service provider and the modem will assign a DHCP IP to the router. All the traffic will get patented when it leaves to the internet. The next is warehouse. Warehouse is very simple. It does only have one internet leg and then there is only one user machine. We don't have any voice subnets there. Corporate office is a little different design. We do have two routers. MPLS connects to the first router, internet connects to the second router and then we do some T-lock extensions. So T-lock extension is a concept in which we extend the transports from one router to the other, which we will discuss in detail when we are bringing up the corporate office. And on the LAN side, there is a L2 switch and behind the L2 switch, we do have the voice phone and the user machine. That's pretty much it about the design. And uh, please note, the color codings of the interfaces are very important here. If you remember, I do have requested you to take a color printout. This is the reason. So if you see, um, I do have green code for MPLS link, yellow for uh, internet link and the brown one are representing the internal connectivities. What I'm going to do is quickly walk you through the other slides and what are the relevance of those slides? Why do I have that, right? If you see here, the next slide is interface diagram. This shows you the interface numbers which we are going to use in our lab topology. Followed by that, there is a separate slide for the IP address only and there is one which shows both interface and IP address. And this specific slide is going to talk about which interfaces is going to be configured under which VPN. For example, the ones which you see in this color are going to be in VPN 0, right? So on this router, these two interfaces is going to be configured under VPN 0. Followed by that, green is VPN 10 and yellow is VPN 20. So if you take sales office, for example, gig 02 is going to be configured under VPN 10, gig 03 is going to be configured under VPN 20. Moving on, we do have other diagrams as well, which are site specific diagrams. So if you see here, I do have a data center physical diagram, followed by the data center interface diagram, data center IP address diagram, and data center interface and IP address diagram. So this will be helpful when we are configuring those specific sites. So that's why I do have put this separately for your benefit. One more slide which I'm going to talk specific here is the routing design diagram. Here I do talk about the routing protocol which is used. Right? Say example here on the LAN side, we are going to use OSPF for VPN 10 interface and for the VPN 20 interface, we are going to use EHRP, same on the other side. If you see these two interface, we are going to configure VRRP between them. Whereas on the WAN side, we are going to use a static routing. So this routing design diagram will show you what is the routing protocol which we are going to use. Same as this data center, I do have all these diagrams for all other sites, starting from sales office, warehouse, and also for the corporate office. One final diagram which I want to talk about before we wind off this video. Let me just navigate to that diagram. Here it is. This is the same diagram which we have discussed already, but there is an extension leg to a third party site. This third party site is introduced uh, to showcase some specific scenarios in the later sections of our video series, uh, like doing NAT when the traffic is exiting to a third party site and other specific scenarios as well. So we will discuss in detail about this third party connectivity when we are in that specific videos. I'll leave it up to you to explore all these pending diagrams. Uh, they are all available in the file which I have shared to you. Please do go through and definitely reach back to me via the comment section if you have any queries. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it was informative. Do comment below for any queries or suggestions. The playlist for this complete Cisco has given course is available in the description box below and also here in the cards. If you want to encourage me, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you think some of your friends or colleagues will find my content or channel useful, do share and also do not forget to hit the notification bell icon.